everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and let's leave no dye behind. Today I have some leftover Paradise Fibers acid dyes that were just mixed with some water, and I had used foam brushes to create a hand-painted color white for another video. So the brushes are already in the dyes in the colors blue, yellow, and green, which is much more of a teal from this line. And I have the most of that teal color for sure. But instead of following my original vision for these leftover dyes, which would have been to layer them or do some kind of tonal, since we had the foam brushes in here anyway, I decided why not use these foam brushes to create a hand-painted colorway that is random. So with no rhyme or reason, I just started adding the colors on. And there really wasn't very much of that blue. I did dilute a little bit that was left and add that on. I don't know how well that worked, but that green, really the teal, but the green, there was so much of it left that it really was gonna cover most of the yarn. That teal color is so incredibly pigmented and I mean, there was a reasonable amount of it, probably about a gram total. Oh, and I didn't even say, the yarn that I am hand painting right here is Nitpick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. If you would like to learn more about the yarn base, you can find affiliate links down in the video description. And as I kept going, the teal, the green, really did overtake everything. And I got more uh, wild and uh, random with my color placement. But I had originally pre-soaked this yarn with some water and vinegar, so I knew that once I finished applying all of the color, I would be able to put this in a steamer basket to steam set the yarn. However, once I finished adding as much color as I could to this yarn, I did set the yarn into a aluminum pan that I used to hold yarn uh, until the steamer basket on my stove was free. This allowed me to wipe down the counter uh, and start cleaning up the dye that I had there so that way we don't stain the shower curtain that I used to protect my work surface. But after uh, an additional 15 minutes, the steamer basket was free and now we can go add the yarn. I am now going to pop our much more wild <laughs> colorway uh, into my steamer basket, which is still on. And I am going to steam set this for 30 minutes uh, to set the color. Let's wash the yarn. I don't really expect there to be any bleeding here just because, well, there maybe is like a gram, gram and a half of dye at the most. Uh, this colorway is actually really fun. The colors spread a tiny bit, and it's just sort of variegated, mottled, and fairly unique. I haven't dyed something like this in a rather long time. I'm now adding some clear dish soap to the wash basin, and maybe I see a hint of color, a tiny hint of color. Uh, but let's see, we'll do another rinse on camera. It's funny, I find that I start doing a technique and then I sort of follow that line for a while. And it's been a really long time since I have done hand painting with the foam brush. Besides the other video before this one, of course. But I'm really happy that I did. And I'm glad I did, went a different direction with this yarn moth. But anyway, as I did not point out, the water is now clear. So I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. You know, this is a different way to leave no dye behind. Something that I haven't done in a really long time. But it was so satisfying to really control, even though I was going randomly, where these colors were going. And it almost looks like we have white speckles in some area from where the colors didn't strike all the way. Not really speckles, but we have small patches of white in here that is really, really fun. Now, we definitely don't have very much of that blue left. The, the green, the teal color that we have definitely dominates all of the color here, but I still think that it is fun. Loud. 
but fun. It absolutely helps to go outside of your technique comfort zone once in a while. And while I don't do as much hand painting with brushes or pouring on the countertop as I used to, I tend to do things more, even if I'm starting cool in a steam pan, something about this does allow you to have more control and it's fun to mix things up and try something again that you haven't tried in a while because sometimes that can really inspire you to go and do something very different from what you've been doing lately. And yeah, if you're ever, I suppose if you're ever feeling like Dyer's Block and you're not sure what you want to do, uh, take some leftovers, maybe some, some remnant yarn you have in your collection and just do something a little bit different and maybe you'll see that it inspires you to do uh, something else. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I post videos at least twice a week and we have a lot of fun because I enjoy pushing myself to explore new to me and revisiting older to me techniques and just learning different ways that I can create beautiful colors on yarn. I do have an Etsy shop where I sell the hand dyed yarn featured in my videos. I also have a Patreon. You can find links to everything down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.